Hi, some people have asked us how we used our digital die cutter to die cut a mylar. As you know, those mylars are very difficult to find and become very expensive. In addition, with the knit contour, there's a lot of advantage to being able to print your own shapes and then cut the little holes so that it goes through the machine in case you have one of the newer tractor feed models instead of the friction feed model. Model. We're going to show you the basics of how to do it. Um, can't teach you how to use Illustrator, but uh, we'll still do it the best we can. What you're looking at here is um, Illustrator. We measured the mylar's width. Um, the length really doesn't matter because uh, the machine can accept a long length of paper, but in this case we made it so that it would fit a legal size sheet of paper. Then we measured the holes, and uh, we'll zoom in for a second here. You'll see that the holes on the left-hand side are 2 millimeters by 2 millimeters wide. Um, the holes on the right-hand side here, uh, they're oval, and they are roughly 2 centimeters high by 4 centimeters wide. Both types of holes are uh, set at three millimeters apart. So what we did here was we created a grid that was uh, one millimeter um, apart. So as you can tell, we've got three little spaces between the holes. That represents the three millimeter spacing. And then we were able to use that uh, millimeter grid to shape our um, holes so that they would be the exact size and um, the quantity of holes is actually uh, just pure repetitive work we just copied and pasted the holes uh, so that they were all there uh, and all in place now, the important thing using Make the Cut software uh, for the digital die cutter is that it will cut these holes in the order in which the layer shows them at. So uh, we'll take a little moment and then show you the layers really quick. Okay, we're back with a slightly different view of the screen. So basically, these over here represent each of the different ovals and if you look down here this is the first one you'll see that as I click down the list uh, it will start to highlight each oval so what you want to do is order these paths in the order in which you want them to cut so we started from here we went up in this direction and then we had these circles here cutting downward in this direction to minimize the amount of traveling uh, that the cutter would need to do. Then finally we cut the uh, square all the way or the rectangle all the way around it. So this is actually a very simple cut. Uh, should take less than about two minutes even for this um, legal size and all these different holes. What we did here was we saved this in Illustrator and then imported that into Make the Cut. So give us a second and we'll show you how to import it into Make the Cut. Hi, we're here in the Make the Cut software. This software uh, came with our digital die cutter, so you may not be familiar with it unless you already use a digital die cutter. But um, generally what this can do is you can draw your shapes in here and then cut it out on the machine. However, it really does not do precision um, drawing like uh, Illustrator does. So that's why we used Illustrator to draw something like our Mylar, which really needed precision uh, measurements. And we're just going to import it here into Make the Cut. So one thing we want to make sure to do is to import the strokes only and you can sort of see here's a rectangle these little dots here are actually representing the many holes and once we've got it imported you can see that the red lines are the cut lines 
everywhere that's white is actually where we're going to tear the paper away and uh, the blue area represents the finished cut so um, at this point we're ready to cut it out on our machine hi we're back here with the machine and we're going to show you what we're trying to do today this is a mylar that we made it's made on a uh, plain paper this is 20 pound copy paper but really we found that 24 pound works a lot better it's slightly heavier and cuts a little bit more crisply but we've pre-printed um, a pattern here um, that the knit uh, contour can help us uh, work with it's a measured drawing from rectangella which is a free broco pattern now what, one thing you want to make note of you have to leave at least an inch and a half of margin down here because that's what it's going to take to get it through the machine so that um, you can actually see the first row and the machine can be pulling the paper through uh, like this so like I said we've pre-printed this um, the machine actually cut these holes and these holes so we've got another one here on our mat um, basically the way these machines work is um, you have this this mat here um, and the machine pulls the mat back and forth and then it has an arm that goes across to do the cutting so between manipulating the up and down motion of the mat and the uh, sideways motion of the blade it can do virtually any shape so uh, what we've done here is we've marked out the corners um, of our pattern so that um, the machine will cut the holes exactly where we want them. So we're just going to move over here to our machine and um, stick our mylar in here. Okay, and it's going to take us a minute here to uh, set this up on the computer. So now we're just moving this with um, the arrow keys on our computer and aligning the little laser light, um, which is over here, to the markings that we made. And uh, then we're going to do some more aligning just to make sure that we get it just right. Okay, now you can see it's going to start making the oval cuts on the right hand side and uh, the mat is moving towards us as the um, cutter is cutting them. So you can see that it's doing it in the order that we mentioned um, earlier. It's doing the ovals going up, then it's going to turn around and do the circles coming back down. And that's it folks, um, that was approximately two minutes uh, for all those little holes and um, the side cuts. So um, let's take a look at what we've got here and hopefully the machine will not embarrass me. Okay, so you just lift this off. And there you go. If we had used a heavier paper, it probably would not have torn like it did here. Um, but if we peel this off carefully, you will see that we have a beautiful mylar that will go into the um, machine quite well. So we're, we're going to take a moment and then put it into Knit Radar and see how that goes. 
Hi, we're back again with the Knit Contour, and as you can see, we've loaded up our uh, pre-made mylar, and uh, we've got the stitch scale in here with the zero aligned to the center point because we're using uh, a quarter scale um, drawing here. So uh, the first thing we want to do is to enter in the uh, row gauge. So we're just going to put in 22 here. And then you can see we can manually advance this and see what it's going to do. So according to this, if my gauge is uh, 22 rows per uh, 10 centimeters, then I should be knitting 85 rows. Um, this is what we do to test, but of course, you know, while you're knitting, you just plug this into the row counter or into the machine, and it'll do this automatically. So this is how um, the um, mylars made with a digital die cutter work. Hope you enjoyed it.